thank you all for persevering with us um, through the meeting and, and coming here. Um, I'd like to recognize our guests, and if you just identify yourselves for the record. Kyle Landis, Mary Dave Lawrence, John Eden. Okay. Um, any agenda revisions um, from any of the board members? Um, well, we need to add that one um, action agenda item for the Checks. approving the authorization of check writing. So Bill asked me at the end not to do anything with that for some reason. Okay. He did that, and I, I told him that we probably do have another board meeting on the day of the school meeting, which is June 28th. That's actually a board meeting. Um, so that if, if anything needed to be done, we just do it there. June the second meeting? I thought we were the first Monday of the month. It's the June 28th is the school meeting for the vote. That's yeah. actually an in-person vote. Yeah. Um, and so that's actually an official school meeting. Oh, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. So yeah. if we have to do anything with this blanket authorization, we'll do it then. Do we uh, have a time on that? 5.30. Okay. Great. <laughs> okay. Um, public comments or correspondence? Okay. Um, Who would like to be our timekeeper? I would love to be our timekeeper. <laughs> Can I do it? <laughs> if you please. And so we have, um, okay, so our next uh, item up is the consent agenda, uh, which is to approve the minutes from uh, June, or June 3, 2019 meeting. Is there any motion? Uh, I had one very small, Spelling change? Was that Talitha's name? Oh, okay. He changed, and since I can't edit it. And? Um, so it's on page mean, four? Tell the that part. to you? Yeah. It's. Let's first, just, just, let's first uh, approve the motion. Oh, we have to approve them? Uh, oh, thank you. Yeah, and then, <laughs> so. Okay, so I, is, it, is there a motion? I, I move. Second? I'll second. Okay. Um, discussion? Okay. Um, it's on page four, about the third paragraph down. It's just T-A-L-I-T-H-A. -A. Um, in along the same vein, I would say that uh, on page uh, one, uh, under the 1.0 call to order, it's Elliot Berg, B-U-R-G, and John uh, Puglio, P-U-L-E-I-O, as opposed to John Paleo, although it the age would be, the <laughs> age would work. Yeah. Um, so with any other changes? Can you keep coming with that? Yep, it's oh, on. Sorry, it's under 3.8? Um, is that true? That is correct. Under 3.8, it's the second paragraph. Okay, and yep. it's T-O. T it should be T-A-L-I-T-H-A. -L T-H-A. Um, any other revisions? Uh, is there a motion? Uh, in, all in favor of the uh, minutes as amended, please say aye. 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 Any objections? Hearing none. Uh, next up is um, discussion of the gym renovations, um, 3.1. And I would, yeah, so 3.1. We. Yeah, this is one of the items that has come back onto the agenda just for clarification purposes. Um, and um, I think I'm going to ask that we hold off just a little bit until Bill gets here to talk about it, because he was going to give us some insight about the uh, fund balance and the move to capital budget. So I think that will all come together well at that point. Same for the update on the playground. Unless you have any update for us on the Bill playground? Was the contact for that. He was. He did. Out with Black River Design, so I, think I, think I mean, I can give you the update on some of the roof stuff and some of the boiler stuff. And Great, but basically, it was in the board notes. But um, the roofers should be coming sometime this week or next um, to do uh, the reworking of our leaky roof. So I'm um, looking it's to celebrate library, that. Right? Just over the library, right? Just over the library, that section, or is it beyond? I believe that they are doing a pretty comprehensive look over, and Nate was really impressed with banister roofing that we'll be doing that work. So um, I'm feeling very hopeful. 
So it, it, it and ban continued problems. And Bannister's not the original folks? No, they okay. don't. The original folks no longer exist. Okay. And so do you, do you know one way or another whether that repair is being covered by the warranty? It is. It is. Great. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and the boiler? Um, may I finish? Sure. Oh, sure. Thing, I'm sorry. Um, which Bill will also probably weigh in on. So as we've been looking at this, and um, there's been uh, through the winter, you know, we had a pretty aggressive winter, which I don't know may become more commonplace uh, in years to come. But we continue to run into problems with um, the fans on top of the roof that are part of the refrigeration system. And so um, Nate, as he was uh, working with the roofers as well as examining this, we had, to, we had two service calls um, just because of drifting and it was hard to keep up with. Um, you know, and with the nature of, a, of the flat roof, the less you do to it, uh, shoveling wise, walking on wise, etc., the better it is for the roof. So, um, anyways, his uh, um, kind of proposal is to actually build up uh, the platform higher to accommodate more, so we don't have the service calls and that type of thing while we have banister there. So, um, Bill and I will talk to you when he gets in regarding those quotes that we've gotten from Alliance Mechanical as well as from uh, Bannister to make those improvements long term so mm -hmm. that it's all covered. And mm -hmm. ready what, to roll. what mechanical was that? Alliance. Alliance. Mm -hmm. And so, the, they're just mm -hmm. to raise these uh, refrigeration fans right. off the and top. You'll of see it on many flat <coughs> roofs, you know. Yeah. Um, admiring wayside set up as I was with the sixth graders the other day but um, yeah they would build up curbs mm -hmm. um, that then the roofers would ensure was waterproof underneath etc um, so that we don't have the build up of snow and drifting that's uh, affecting <coughs> the mechanical system okay great so um, do you have a sense as to what those quotes are or, uh, do you have a sense about five thousand total for the because it's actually involved in two companies. Okay. So. And would that be for the the building the platforms or whatever? For two, what? two for two units. For two units, mm -hmm. okay. And does that include the roofing work or not? That does include the roofing work as well as the crew and hookups. Okay. Okay. Next. Uh, the boiler. So that should be coming. Uh, the. 20, the week of the 24th, I believe, they're going to be more. Okay. That's the normal summer cleaning routine, and then uh, we'll be working to adjust uh, some hours as, as needed based on the workflow. So, um, you know, that's just something I've asked Nate to be uh, considering with building use, et cetera. Okay, great, thank you very much. Um, so I, I would propose that we hold off the discussion for the trim rehab and the update on playground until we have Bill with us. Um, and so we're down to uh, 4.0. Uh, any other reports yeah, to the board? I'd love to check back. Just there was a um, topic that came up. We had our visits with Casey, and um, I asked him, um, you know, we met regarding transition. I've been setting up um, you know, transition files, um, making sure that we've got the smooth transition of just basic information, that type of thing. Um, and I posed the question around the transition team and asked him to formulate an email response that I could reach you to. Okay? So this is from Casey. Um, hi Amy, thank you so much for making yourself available to support a positive transition to Romney. Additional, additionally, time uh, with faculty and staff last week was so helpful for me in putting things into perspective. I appreciate the offer of a transition committee, but at this time would not like to pursue that. My vision for the transition through the summer, as I shared with the faculty and staff last week, will include reaching out about times I will be available to meet the teachers to connect if they're able, available and interested. While I do not expect anyone will be available during the summer in a formal capacity, 
Some teachers have expressed interest and willingness to connect over the summer. When I'm in and settled and after connecting with Deborah, I will share my availability over the summer and look forward to further connecting with the staff, I'm sorry, with faculty, staff, and families. I will create opportunities to elicit input and learn more about running operations and look forward to the intentional planning that goes into summer work. Thank you, Casey. Okay. I'm just gonna forward this to you, Chris. Great, appreciate that. Any, any other developments or reports? I think uh, the year's wrapping up. We're, we've had many uh, special events, as you saw in uh, the newsletter. Sixth graders were tremendous at Wayside. I so enjoyed their company, and sounds like they had a tremendous day with Diddy and um, the crew. Um, past that, it's just trying to tie up loose ends and make sure all of our end of the year reports are done and that for normal student celebrations are kicked off. Uh, we had a great visit from uh, to kick off summer reading program uh, with Kelly Hubbard Library um, just last Wednesday, and um, so we're hoping to keep those kids reading this summer. So, um, our test scores back? From the <clears throat> our test scores are back, and I wish I could tell you, but they're like under, they're embargoed right now. Under wraps, all right. So, but I'm, I'm really excited for, for you guys to um, take a peek at those when they've been released. Do you have a sense as to when they will be released? I mean, do you have they, to pay a tariff or something to get them released? The when? I want to say it's June 20th, but June 20th. I'm not sure, I'm not 100% on that. There's a difference between like releasing individual students and releasing school level results. Mm -hmm. So I, I need to go back and double check that. And, really look for the nod from Jen or Arsenal. <laughs> so. Just as a point of information for me, what, why are they in part or like what's? It's individual student data that's back, but it hasn't been compiled at a school level for relief in a public way. Yeah. So individual student reports will go home with report cards. Mm -hmm. And so they will also be able to see um, the improvement students have made. OK, great. Thank you very much. Um, so we can um, we can go to the action agenda if you're ready for that. Although I think, again, oh, I think we go for hunting for Bill. No, let me, I'll go do that. Uh, yeah, huh? I'll, I'll go for Bill. Oh, I don't yeah. mind. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, Good Bill hunting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> we are firing an all honey cylinders tonight. Just filling the space. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, what are you going to do for your summer? Got any <laughs> fun plan? <laughs> Anyone? My sports elicited swimsuit model contract ran out last year, so I'm totally free. <laughs> that sounds great. <laughs> It's living off royalties now. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's a popular issue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the large animal that <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Allison's comedy show will be coming out soon because she's on camera. Oh, <laughs> yet oh, again. <laughs> You're going to get discovered. Oh, no. <laughs> Someone working at Orca yeah. is going to be like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how are you? Good. Welcome. Okay, Welcome. Um, so we are going to go back to our discussion agenda and um, where we have gym rehab and the update on the playground and other yeah. capital projects. Yeah. So if you could give, give us any background on uh, the playground update, any yep. more information about that. So, yep. so John Ray Hill, Kelly Bush, and I met yep. today. The reason since Amy is transitioning as well as myself, Kelly yep. has been asked to watch this topic until Casey's really on board and can take, and can take it on. So not that Casey isn't capable, we just let him make sure this transition. Right? Mm -hmm. um, where John Helmgarten has given me a proposal for John Rahill and John Helmgarten and some other folks from Blackboard Design 
to look at all the issues we talked about at the last meeting, which is not only the playground issues, but some good uh, the work in front of the building with the sidewalk. And okay. it looks like it's going to be about 5500 to $6,000 total. They had an estimate. I'm putting a little buffer in that estimate. I'll just be right there. And up. that's on the, on the area in front of the building? Yeah, yeah all okay. the sidewalk issues and all that. Um, we're all very concerned about that front sidewalk area. It's going to get very pricey mm -hmm. because it's it's the under it's the subsurface underneath. It's the problem is there isn't water drainage from underneath that. Okay. So that's what's. I mean, we all know we all live in Vermont long enough. What causes things to rise and fall? It's frost and water underneath. So what was the fifty five hundred? It's the design. Remember how oh. you sixty five hundred for just yep. the sidewalk? Yeah. Yep. So he's going to do all. The, John Rahel's being a great community resource as he always is mm -hmm. and saying I'm going to help you guys out mm -hmm. and so it's really parts of different personnel and some of John Radio but he's also donating some time as he has to the piece okay. so um, we're trying I said to John Helmgarden give me that letter of intent I think, you know, before the end of this month when I'm done so I can sign it for all of you because you gave me that authority last time to do that mm -hmm. get that done um, we had an initial meet. We the good news is the folks who Don Marshy did the site work. We actually have a topographical map of all the back side of. So that's really accelerating things because the problem would have been if we had had a survey everything in the back and all that. So that's giving us some elevations. Um, we're actually trying to get to a more, believe it or not, a more gentle slope so we don't have, to have handrails because there's code that allows you not to have to put up handrails if you can get to a 1 in 20 slope instead of a 1 in 12 slope. Mm -hmm. And John Rahill said that today. He said it would be a lot better off in the long run and a lot less maintenance and to use stay mat instead of uh, that. The issue is the end of the building. We need to put an ADA entrance at the end of the pre-K primary building. So then when the when face the is out toward the parking lot? The Oh. Okay, at the end of the day. So I said end of the year. Yeah. End of the day. Sorry. Right. Yep, that makes sense. Okay. Um, so I have a we, quick question about yeah. that. From a practical standpoint, will stay mat be sufficient for somebody to actually physically push a wheelchair up and or get snow removal off of on a slope? So we do do it at other schools. And it's worked out okay? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not asphalt, but the problem with asphalt is that we're going to probably have more freeze thaw. Yeah, It'll yeah. get more, more expensive to maintain. Once you have some freeze thaw and you have a dip, to get more stay mat doesn't cost that much. Right. But when you have freeze, especially rise to cut out the asphalt level it tamp it back down put new asphalt on it when you do little bits of asphalt it's very expensive mm -hmm. compared to big areas of asphalt so we've had this experience at um at Calus and East Mountain as well All right. so we've we've had some of that it you're right i mean snowblowers don't like gravel but they can handle it just means you're replacing him with the snowblower yeah um a little quick uh, so with the improvement to the door on that end of the building, would also that be able to be used then as a handicap entrance? Yeah, that's so what we're talking about, ADA the... total okay. handicap entrance. Well, not just the exit. Right, right, right. I, I say exit, yeah, both. Yeah. yeah, the whole idea is that that's another accessible. There would be other accessible places that we, as we talked about, we did a walk around about this and grants and the fire exit doors and a little bit more asphalt in the back, the playground mm -hmm. the entrance exit, we do that too. So does this um, <clears throat> fixing up that entryway as an ADA, is that more extensive than we were anticipating? Probably. Okay, and does that throw off anything in terms of the projects that we have? I, I just don't know. No, no. Okay. I just don't know. We're too early into the design phase to even get a cost estimate right now. Okay. Can I just clarify, was it 5500 for the the sidewalk design or for the playground? Both. Okay, sidewalk and the ramp. So we had, we had just sixty five hundred for the side for right. the side for the sidewalk. We can do it all. Got it. So we're going to save some money that we thought. I can't tell you how much until we get estimates for the. We're trying to make the site work as that's very appropriate. It's going mm -hmm. to last, but it's inexpensive to meet those goals as we can. Okay and lay out a fence so we get to that piece. Because if you remember, we have two different contracts. Yeah. We have the fence and the ramp, and Black River Design is helping us with that. The work that Amy's done on playground equipment, we've got to get into that piece as well. But that's working with the playground contractors. Which and we don't have. We don't have that going yet. Identified yet, yeah, right? we don't. And so literally, this is a, I'm telling you about a 12 o'clock today meeting. Mm -hmm. OK. So this is how, I mean, I met with John Helmgarten last week about this, and then John today. Okay. So John Rahill's um, 
has some good ideas for actually a ramp coming up on the parking lot side that actually might be easier. We're definitely after what you were talking about, Katie, about trying to keep the distance as short as possible, but getting to that one in 20 slope, which is even more gradual, but it gets away from handrails and having to have flat spots along the slope. So we wanted to have those as well. So we're really trying to, and I thought it was a good idea that John Randall had. Mm -hmm. um, does he think there's enough space to do that? Yeah. Okay. It, what he had a, he took out 11 by, 11, no, 8 by 14 sheet. And, you know, he was just scaling it off. But, I mean, he's got to do this design, Chris. So yep. I, I, I wouldn't quote me on that. He's got to sit there and really play and work with Don Marsh, um, who is our civil engineer, to help us do all that work. Okay. If they're looking at the entry, you know, I want to make sure that the doors are also flagged um, for some of those, the renovation yeah. there, yeah. just because they're resting. Okay. Yeah, those doors, those doors and the front doors were never replaced in the renovation. I was speaking of the front doors. Yeah, the front so doors are they're running into they're the wide enough? Issue. They're wide enough. It's, the problem is they're rusting at the bottom. They're literally rusting away. Push bars are breaking down, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. so, so the, the, we'll, have to, we'll have to look at all that. And so then um, one of the things we looked at is you, we talked about the capital fund in there a little bit, but the, if I go to page uh, 22 and you look at the Romney Memorial School Capital Fund additional information, we started with what's currently in your capital fund of a total of the right numbers here, so I'm not going to. Your current capital fund balance um, well, that, so the current capital fund balance is about 160000 ending this year, but that doesn't include the deduct of the boiler. Remember, we've been talking about this? Yep. So we also said that we're recommending to you on the page before that, on page 29, that you move $89,000 over to your capital fund and leave 2%. And we ask that you do that motion in percentage because that may, you know, we're in June, so we hopefully we'll get more money and not have less. Yep. So that leaves us 65,326 in the general fund. The idea is that if you look at it on page 22, and if I'm going too fast, slow me down, is that you would have a capital at the end of the day of page, page 22. Uh, no. If you look at the Romney Memorial line, you would have a total of 249,602. Yep. Your budgeted funds would be 40, so it would make it up to 289. And that 284 includes the boiler work that you've already approved. Playground work up to $90,000. $6,500 for design of the entrance. 95,000, I sent this to you in an email, to, or sent it to Chris, I think he sent it along. Um, $95,000 for soundproofing the gym. Chimney work, because we just learned, as I sent an email to all of you, that the chimney needs to be lined. That's $12,600. And because the roofers are coming back and doing some warranty work, something that Nate and... Uh, yeah. You shared that part, okay. And that's about... That was five thousand. I I had planned on seven when I was doing this budget. You know me. I always throw in a little bit extra just to make sure. So that would give us two hundred eighty-four thousand dollars worth of spending and leave about fifty-five hundred at the end. In the capital. In the capital towards Romney. So we're trying to. You know, I I called Chris last week. The lady said, I think we got this finally figured out, mm -hmm. money-wise, <clears throat> for you. So that everything gets done. Now, as Amy said, there are other projects like the doors, mm -hmm. and we just did two double doors at Cal's this past spring, and it was about eight to ten thousand dollars because you've got a frame. Yep. You don't just take door out, put door in. Yep. It's framing and electronics because there's electronic holders on, so you got to have an electrician, you have to have framers, and you have to have um, interior installers. That's what they usually call the door with the floors installers. So the frame is also rusted. I, I, I bet the frames. The the frame, the frame, yeah. Usually when you have a door, they usually say you, you buy the whole unit frame and all just because they match together if you're going to get something. 
Okay. Um, Maybe we should get one made out of aluminium. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally not kidding. Uh, What's it, what do you say? What do you say? Maybe we should not put it in a steel door. We should put it in an aluminium door, or whatever we call it, aluminum, aluminum door. We, we would like, we Is there a safety like, issue? We let the architects figure that out for what's the best wear and price for the money. They're pretty yeah. good at that. Okay. I mean, John, John Hemelgar and John Radel have done us right by lots of work yeah. and getting us the most efficient use of every dollar for the residents of the yeah. sites. Good. I, 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 have, I have lots of praise for those guys. They, they tell us when, hey, you're spending money, you should. So they're good about that. And they're the first architects I've met to do that. Really? Yeah. That's good. That is good to hear. Yeah. Um, okay, so we are. Any, any questions about this capital plan? Just Can you just tell me where you got your $284,000 number? Yeah. So if I look at page 22, yeah. hold on, I'm to put my glasses on. I'm just to put the on. Um, yeah, I'm down in the capital fund, additional information down right. at the bottom there. Yeah. So I'm looking at that 249. Mm -hmm. Well, that's taking the, uh, the, the 160 that you had in your capital fund, plus what we're recommending for uh, Romney, which is a transfer of 89,000. I'm doing this with whole numbers. Okay. But that 89,000 plus the 160 should get you to that 180, to that 249. And then we subtracted all the project. Then you see we put 40,000 that's in this current year's budget. Yeah. That gets us to the 289. And then we subtracted the 284 with projects. Okay. It's just a different way of kind of getting to the same accounting we've been doing. We've done it a little differently. Lori said, I think this is a little pure if we get to everything you have and then start subtracting out all the projects, whether they're okay. starting as in the boiler is next week or. That makes sense. Thanks. And I uh, think I calculated 274,100, adding up all the, the 65,090, 6,500. It's not the 65,000, it's the 89. For the boiler, is what oh, I was thinking. Isn't it more, isn't added, it more than we added 65? More because one of the things in the boiler project is not there. there's no contingency money. And okay. looked at me and said, no. Okay, so 65 is... So you'll see on this thing that I sent you, Chris, right. Lori put in 10%, which is your share of contingency, okay. which is another $6,600. Okay, so that, that helps. Yeah. Um, okay, any... Yes. Um, Bill... Did any work, was any work on the roof of the gym? Has that been performed? Nope. What about trim replacement? No. What about painting the interior of the gym? You know, that hasn't happened. No. No, no, well, it has to a certain height. Level because one or level two? There's two levels. Right, but I mean, it's been up, it hasn't been that far off the ground, I want to say. Okay. Uh, what about the gym and primary side? That the, some of the gym siding has been done, but the primary has not. Uh, wall insulation in the primary unit? No. Primary windows? No. Uh, sidewalk improvements, we know. Uh, gym floor? No. no. Primary classroom lights? No. What's this, this list? Is, this, is, this is a list that was provided to us um, a few years ago, once when we did the, was it basically a capital improvement plan? You mentioned that Yes, before. to um, plan ahead for the next five years and beyond of what we needed to set aside in funds to address issues that couldn't either be, we couldn't afford to address in the bond because we had to scale it down or work perhaps immediate, but would be in the not so distant future. And so in an attempt to be more uh, thoughtful and from a planning perspective of ensuring that we're keeping the building up, um, keeping its upkeep in order, trying to reduce the amount of bonding you'd have to do forward. The intent was, so well, let's fund the capital fund on an ongoing basis to ensure that we don't have to go up for a multi-million dollar bond again. Uh, and so the facilities director for U32 did a 
five year from 2017 to 2021 yeah. um, plan. And I didn't actually, I only went through the items that were at 10,000 or higher on the list. There's other smaller items on here. And um, these are all to be, we're, we're, point, we're recommended to be completed during that time frame. Uh, so some have already passed without being done and some have already be done in the next year or two are to be done this year. So we're talking like uh, gin roofs, 32,000, mm -hmm. trim is 10,000, uh, gym and primary siding together is 35,000. I don't know what it's, if gym we've, been done. We've, we've had sections of the gym, but not everything of the gym. I'd have to go, I'd have to have someone look at that. Right? Why if we had sections of the gym done, like what caused that to? Because we have rotting boards. So that's what I'm wondering. So there were rotting boards? Yeah. And now we're just, the rest of it is, it's going to have to replace. It's going to have to. It's going to deteriorate at some point. I'd like to just mention, just for your knowledge, Nate flagged an area on the uh, gym roof the other day. He hasn't had a chance to check it out, but he found it troubling. Oh, find the top of the roof, like yeah. like yeah. leaking, yeah. leaking yeah. troubling. Yeah, he's concerned there could be a leak there, but um, you to get up on the gym roof, you need a second person. Mm -hmm. it's, so he's, he's coordinating the car. It's a busy time here with all the orchestrating for summer work and everything. But I just, I'm not trying to sway thinking. I just want to be transparent. Mm -hmm. What else are the teachers bringing up that they need? Do you know? Is there anything that isn't on that list? That this has, is only capital stuff. Right, but like you mentioned windows, or is there anything on that list that is? has gotten worse since whenever it was that you the guys discussed that. Worse. Okay. Does anybody wish to reconsider how we are appropriating the money that we have before we lose control of how money is spent on our school? Uh, that is one of the questions here. And um, do we have any specific plans for the primary unit in terms of? If we could, I mean, if we wanted to shift our focus there, I think the sidewalks pretty uh, pretty important. If you'd like more copies, that would get you. Something. So would the sidewalk be more important than these things in terms of the primary unit? It, it's hard. It's hard to give you that piece, Chris. From my perspective, I'd want John Hemelgarden slash John Rayhill to weigh in on that because you've got accessibility issues at the same time. Uh, how far? How much water infiltration do we have coming in? We know we've had it mm -hmm. in the primary wing between the siding. We've done tried to do patching the best we can, and you know we replaced the roof last year, which was great. So we got the top part taken care of. But those windows are, you know, they're. I don't know if they're original to the '91 when it was built, or if they. Some of them, I, I remember from Adam telling me some of them were replaced, but they some have been replaced they, over they, time. They weren't replaced with. Uh, commercial standard windows. They were replaced with home level residential windows, so you don't get the same type of window in life. Is the kind of has anyone here been in one of the primary classrooms on a warm day? Yeah. What was your impression? My son said everybody stinks because it's so hot in here. Yeah. But he wasn't wrong. Like it was, it yeah. was warm and frothy with fume of all the children running around. Yes, it, it is true. I mean, it, I, I was, is, and kindergarten is also a particular concern. So is that a ventilation issue? Is it a window? I think it's partially the, the upgrades that are on that list, the windows, the siding, the insulation. We didn't um, touch that ventilation system in the last foundation, so we're on the original ventilation system. Um, have air quality testing been done in, in the primary unit? I mean, we used to do the air, we, we've done air quality testing in the, when we're having the difficulty in uh, uh, the 5-6 so, area. No, no, they haven't been done. It hasn't been something that has gotten to that level, but we just, we know, I mean, we're dealing, you know, like in this building, we have air handlers again 20 years old, that's the end of their lifespan. Mm -hmm. That's the, that thing was put in place in 91. We, you know, sometimes it's just clean a filter, sometimes it's, you know, the filters get changed. Filters are on a rotation. They have rotational. They what? 
the filters are on our rotation. They are. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so so it doesn't sound like it's a filter issue. We don't think. Yeah, I mean, it would just take it would take some digging down to what's what's gonna what you know. We're not gonna be able to answer you tonight, Chris. What it's gonna take and be able to have you make a decision on you know how much things cost for those different areas. Mm -hmm. We have we have the um, the plan that Brian brought. Thank you, Brian, for bringing that. Uh, that you know that Matt Colba put together, um, but those are all different considerations when you consider what to do with the capital fund. Well, we and I guess you know the temperature in the primary wing isn't going to be resolved just by having new windows. It's actually it's there's a it's a design yeah. around it's a like design. light it's that's so coming in insulation. Yeah, right, so right. the figures that are on here aren't necessarily just by putting in new windows you don't get a cool room. Right, right. No, no. Just to clarify that, that. Yeah, understand that. That's I mean, we we didn't touch that side of the building renovations. Mm -hmm. So it is almost forty years old. It's showing its age. And many of the windows that are in there, if you take a look at them, aren't designed to be able to promote more air movement necessarily. You know, okay. it's like, you know, they're more fixed or, you know, so I don't know what gains could be done by just putting in a different type of window. I'm sure, like you were saying, it's multifaceted, that issue. Um. I just sent this to everybody, by the way. It should be in your inbox. How, you know, in terms of the gym roof, mm -hmm. is that and how far beyond its life is that? I don't know. If you know. Here it has replaced me in 2019. I, I, I would assume those are 15, 20 years shingles, and Matt's got details in another report that we have. You know, in the story with, with that backs up that of some of the ages of things. And, we have to look at uh, so just to give everybody so an update, we're 25 into minutes into our allotted okay. 60 minutes for discussion on gym and capital projects. Okay, so we see primary windows for 2020. Oh, you got it right there. Yeah. See? Was that? Okay. You are. Uh, on top and of it's all more notes. And if it's not in there, it's in another set of notes. That was a document I was first thinking of. Okay. It was that PowerPoint that I put together. I think it's a more visual version of, of what the chart is. I don't know if it's new information or not. So what? Do you know when this was created? So, is, is there a, a leaking issue in the primary unit? Is there leaking? I mean, Bill was talking about leaking going down. I, I don't know. No, we changed the roof. Okay. We know we've had in the past that water infiltration from the walls. Okay. I can't but see is that from the happening right now. I haven't gotten the survey. Well, has it happened, to your knowledge, over the past, since we've had the new roof? Has there been water infiltration into the walls? And let me, ask, let me back up a little. How would you know that there was water infiltration previously? Because it would be there coming in through the windows along the sides by the trim. So it would actually be so coming into the classroom. I can't tell you if it isn't happening, Chris. All I can tell you is when it does happen, because in a building, it can be leaking into the walls and not seeing it on the inside of the building. Okay, but what I'm saying, previously when it was happening, we saw it. Yeah, again, we replaced some windows or, you know, we had to, that's when we got to it, when we came all the way out into the, into the room itself, through the wall or through the window or through the door. I mean, that's when we did these things. It wasn't, you know, it, we're trying to get, one of the goals of this was to get in front of it going all the way because if it's coming into the walls and we're not seeing it, it's probably get, I, I agree with you. You with another me. word that we dealt with in the past, which is mold. Mold, right. Um, so, Lamy, has your experience been that there's been any leakage in the primary unit over the past two years? But is, I've not been aware of any. Okay. Um, and I'm not saying maintenance-wise, it's not worthwhile replacing things, but just yeah. in terms of a, an immediate need. Um, So the sixty-five thousand that we're transferring to the merged. Well, sixty-five to explain the merge. I'm sorry, John. 
that um, becomes uh, a pooled resource or right. a Romney resource? It's a pooled resource under the general fund. Okay. And we're suggesting that because of many, as Laura was giving a good example of how funds transfer from the state to the, just that alone. And we're constantly putting cash on hand and money coming in. Mm. You bring up ADA compliance of bathrooms in here, which is something that I don't actually think we've talked about, but it's a really good point. Do we have so, any issues with that? Uh, we're in pretty good sh I think we're fine. Um, we are, all but two bathrooms are ADA, and we have enough accessible ADA. The code doesn't say you have to have all, but you have to have, if there's something that I'm, gonna, I'm not quoting the code correctly, so I want to speak that up. Mm -hmm. there's, something like, there's something like a reasonable access. A student in first grade needs an accessible bathroom, they have to go down to the other end of the building, right? Or we have to move the classroom into one that has one. Either one would, would address the issue? Either one could address the issue. Okay. Um, you know, the positive, we do have a first grade classroom within here, some of the more accessible spaces. That's true. Okay. Um, do we need changing tables? Do we know what? Uh, that would be we utilize the nurses. Perfect. Okay. Is the um, does the re renovation at the end of the building for ADA compliance address the ADA compliance issues at the main entryway as well? Not what today, but like I said, that was real primary discussion just around, hey, we better make this entrance. Does it, does it address the ADA um, compliance for the building? So the code is that you must have one ADA okay. entrance. Okay. And all areas must be accessible to the ADA. Okay. So redoing the, that entryway that you talked about before, would make the Romney School ADA compliant? I, I'm not going to use the word would. I'm going to use the word should. Could. could, okay. Because I can't guarantee that. Okay. Um, do you that, know? That's John. That's the, I'll just say John Square. Both mm -hmm. of their work. And that's Blackboard Design. I should use the right term. It's Blackboard Design. So. You do know one way or another whether there is a different uh, standard of compliance for fire safety versus the ADA? Yes, there is. Okay, and, and are the... Um, in Vermont, the fire safety is very high. Okay, so would, if we had that one area um, at the end of the primary unit, which is, that's what you're talking about, having an ADA accessible mm -hmm. entryway and exit way, right? Well, we'd like to add that. To yeah, Because okay. if we think it'll make it easier to get to the playground, I'm going off. Sure. Of Katie brought up the <laughs> yep. distance. We're trying to cut all that down. We're like, this, we think we can do this within where we have the funds. I mean, we're trying to get cost assessments. I just don't know dollars for you. And that's what puts you in a hard place as a board right now. You yep. don't have firm dollars yep. on anything except for the boiler and the chimney work and the roof work. That's all we have. So, so I'm, I'm, my, I'm going to assume that it's better to have more than one fire exit than more just than one. Yeah, one and more than one ADA for, safe, for safety purposes. Yep. Um, okay, so if the uh, so we should have, shouldn't have two. Yeah, right? I mean, at that's least why we talked about when we did the walk around back in May. Yeah. We're going to build some wood those ramps, ramps, right? You know, like we're going to do that. That's not that big a cost. Is is days. that is that compliant for safe for fire purposes? Building wooden ramps. John John Hillgard suggested some. He did. Okay. Well, he's the one who just put some asphalt in the back door. It's you know, like three quarters of an inch. Yeah. Okay. Put, some, put some extra asphalt in. Okay. So we're just we're trying to do what we can to try to get the most out of the dollars for the residents. Okay. Mm -hmm. So my uh, any, any more discussion? I mean, I personally would be in favor of reappropriating how we have decided to spend our capital dollars that we have, but I think I've already been pretty clear on that, so. Okay. 
So let's, um, you know, we have a list of, of items here, yep. um, and we should probably go one by one, I think. Um, or we'll, we'll cut to the chase and say it's the room gym renovations that are really the reappropriation, because uh, these other things are, you Do know, have anything else that's are required, right? They're, yeah, we're trying to, I mean, I, do you have this list that I sent you? If not, I'll just give you a no, I'm, well, I, I'm looking yeah. off the list that we read off, which was okay, the yeah, uh, yeah. So, which so is the boiler. Boiler's done. Yeah, boiler's gone. The playground is. We're designing. No, we're not. You know, we're not changing that. Uh, the 6,500 for the design, that's yeah. done. Um, the gym at uh, 95,000. Uh, that that. The chimney work. What? The chimney work is on the. The chimney work is up, but the chimney works. Uh, you have to do that for the boiler, right? right. So it's, uh, that's that's not really uh, negotiable. A roof work uh, and, the, and the roof, 5, the five thousand to take care of the um, curves, bring them up, bring up the units to yeah. preserve the roof and and maintain operations. So that so we're really talking about the um, the allocation for the gym. Yes. Okay. Right. Can you think about a future? A future vote, because um, that's the obvious thing. It's the, the renovation versus these items that have been offered tonight. First, I've heard them. They were put forth years ago. In the past six months, we never heard of any of this, so it's kind of out of the blue. But these all sound like wonderfully significant and legitimate things to put on the table at some point in time. Mm. John, just to be clear so you know that this information has been brought up at different meetings over the course uh, of the last six months, especially as we were planning our budget for this upcoming fiscal school year. So this isn't, this might be, this is a new conversation for this board to have, but we've been having this conversation. Right, um, just noticed that publicly. So that's fine. Hey, well, I, I would say no harm, no foul. I just want you to be aware no. that this, this isn't sort of out of the blue. Um, and, and I would say that the discussion um, about this checklist has been out there, but I don't think we talked specifically about projects this year, about doing any of the primary unit projects. So that is new. Um, and we also um, should not lose sight of the fact that um, with the building being transferred, if it gets transferred to this new entity, the new entity also has responsibility for maintenance. Well, that, that's where I was going to I mean, a future vote. And, uh, you know, no harm, no foul. But, I mean, if, if, if those items, it seems to me, one way to look at it is if those items were um, significant enough to bring to the table, some homework would have been done to get possibly some an update on quotes for what these things cost. So now we're presented with items that we don't know real costs on. So that, but that's so if we were to look forward to what a merge board might go on, it seems to me that if you're, if, if you're looking at the merge board that we have on the gym versus fixing the road, it seems like that's in the brain. They're not going to go for the, the gym renovation over improvements to the It seems to me that we have an opportunity. Thank you. 
see in your my thinking on this is that um, there's sort of there's a philosophical uh, sort of view of this, and that is um, sort of one of the highest, most significant tension points around Act 46 has been the issue around debt and saddling other communities with debt that they didn't incur themselves. And um, you know, we have debt, a considerable amount of debt, because we didn't plan necessarily accordingly over the years to address needs that eventually came to a head. So we are then walking into a new uh, arrangement with virtually no capital budget to speak of um, going into that for our building. And so just from a, what, is it, what message does that send? I think, to me, I, I, I have trouble with that. But also, I think about, and I raised this at our last meeting, another concern I have is that you know, these, all these issues might not be issues that we need to address right now, but we need to start planning to address them. And so um, if, if, if we have no money to address them, we're going to need to start setting aside money down the road. And at this point, you know, Every single time we've run into tension around the capital budget and why it hasn't been funded over the last few years, basically it all comes down to staffing. And so we either cut staffing or we cut uh, the capital budget. The capital budget is lost the last two years. And so at some point, it's not going to be able to lose. And so that means staffing is going to have to be cut. This is at least how I see uh, it's the only other alternative. So that raises a concern for me as well. So that's. That's where my reservation is for uh, so significantly depleting the capital fund uh, for that for this given project.
funds, and when it says both of the default variables and what Chris Leopold was getting for opinion, that money is in those funds for the express purposes that the voters gave to it, then they have to follow that use. So if this fund was for capital improvements that are made. Right, right. It does. You're right, John. You're right on that. And that and this fund was created for capital projects. It doesn't say specific types of projects. And that is only created by a regional budget. There's a capital of funds and that's voted on by this board and so like a motion that dedicates certain funds and it sounds like you put together a way that that works for right. a motion that says these are the specific purposes that right. these How? funds play. I just don't want to give a false, a false sense of security. Okay? That, I, I think the Unified Board will stay there and do what projects people the board say they want to do. I think that green bill is there. I would risk a lot of money on it if that would happen. That would be my personal money. But I don't, I want to be clear with the board that I can't guarantee you. Because guarantee is a different word. But, that, but the risk is the fact that it's the capital fund. Right. So why doesn't this board say you're spending this money on these specific Because purchases. you don't have bids to do that. You have to go through a bidding process to do that. Right? So you have to go through an RFP process and get all those done. You can't award contracts. If you never authorize spend up to X amount. After 15,000 by Vermont statute, you must go through a bidding process. So if you would commit to a certain contract,
underfunded not just this year but in previous years we had this plan in place and then we decided to underfund that plan because we wanted to keep our staffing intact so and do all not
run into an issue, well, potentially, on um, where we may all may be in agreement on transferring the head nexus of two of two percent, but we may we may run into an issue of a difference on how that money then is apportioned, and so uh, we. Well, possibly. It, well, I, it could possibly, but it's there's the possibility that if three people voted or not in support of dedicating it to. For example, the ninety-five thousand to the gym. That would, that, well, that's they, the easiest one to point to. <laughs> um, all three of you. They said they were. They said all three of them are still in favor of spending away that. I, I didn't hear Mary Lynn. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah.
going to be, there's no savings account for, you know, capital improvements if the roof collapsed in the gym. Like, how are we going to pay for that? Well, of course, because we take out a loan to do it, right? But or no, no, we would.
I would just ask that we have two separate. I, I would. Um, I'd appreciate that we have a motion that's specific around the uh, transfer funds, so, uh, that we're all agreeable to, and then we can have a separate motion that can specifically lay out priorities. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think I think it's important for us to at least all be able to agree on the fact. I think that would be wrong.
will be next.
Like, I'm not saying I would vote for that. I'm just saying as a way to get this done, this feels like a more reasonable way to do it.
resolution for the transfer of property as noted in what I call this Cameron's letter.
what? Four to Four zero. to one. Oh, wait. Four. Four to zero. <laughs> Okay, now we need to approve board orders.